many of us have had that feeling. That feeling when you find something beautiful waiting for you in the outside world. It's when something, it's when that feeling, when it resonates deeply inside of you. For you, maybe it was a cute girl you had in math class. Well, perhaps it was a quote from an author that you just weren't quite expecting. I can proudly say that I've gotten this feeling from reading an author. And I've read a lot over the years, and nothing in particular, but I've read a lot. And I can say that no book has ever had such a strong impact on me than the words of Ray Bradbury. And specifically, I'm talking about his writings, Too Soon From the Cave, Too Far From the Stars, Too Soon From the Cave, Too Far From the Stars, Fahrenheit 51, and The Martian Chronicles. And Bradbury has written many books and countless short stories. Bradbury has taught me that I was not alone and that I should never give up. Bradbury once said, I would like to go to Mars in a Campbell soup can. I do plan on going to Mars, but I intend to use a rocket, which is effectively a glorified tin can. And I read the Mushroom Chronicles in the ninth grade, and I knew I wanted to travel to Mars. I didn't have any doubt in my mind that. But I never considered what would happen to the people in my life, as well as society as a whole, when we went to another planet. And the book describes the changes that would take place. For example, at one point, the Earth is destroyed, it's gone, and it's obliterated by war. And the people on Mars have to keep struggling forward without their lifeboat. And it caused the realization with me that there's little point to send a crew to Mars. In fact, the entire idea is not to send people to Mars. It is to push humanity further than we've ever been before, to learn lessons about man, nature, and our place in the cosmos. The epiphany gave me a reason that was much more powerful than ever before colonized Mars. And I'm not the only person to be inspired by Bradbury. Werner von Braun, the rocket scientist that led the team to develop the Saturn V and land on the moon, in an autograph to Bradbury he wrote, you saw it all ahead of us, to the moon, you inspired us. One of Bradbury's best known works is Fahrenheit 51, and you will or have, and you have or will in high school read this. And in the novel, early, Bradbury describes the parlor, which is like a TV room, except the entire wall is a TV. And in some of them, all of the walls make up a single TV. And people quickly become obsessed with the parlors. They refuse to let go of it. And I find myself far too familiar with this. I see my friends and family going through their day-to-day -day lives, refusing to be separated from technology. For example, every year during Christmas, all of my extended family, we cram inside my grandma's little house, right? And you can look around the room and you won't see people having conversations. You'll see people on their phones and tablets and watching TV. And the main character in Fahrenheit 451, Guy Montag, doesn't just struggle with technology. He finds himself becoming growingly attached to books. And he doesn't know whether to let go of books and accept reality, or accept reality and let go of books. And I bring this up because I often face indecision. Normally, my decision is to not make a decision. Whatever life has going for me, I would just roll with the flow. And which means when things start to get really rough, I don't ask for it to stop. I don't try and make it stop. I don't try and make changes. I just assume that it means I have to be near the end, right? Because things don't get, don't get difficult during the beginning. Because it's not about some grand end goal. It is about always moving forward and never giving up. The final thing I'm going to talk about is also the most inspiring. For years, I've had great difficulty putting my swirling thoughts into coherent words. No matter what I said or thought, another side of me fought with it. I struggled with portraying hope and emotion because there was just too much conflict. But Bradbury managed to pull off what I had struggled with for so long. He put the passion and dream of space travel into words. Specifically, I'm talking about his writing Too Soon from the Cave, Too Far from the Stars, in his book, Bradbury Speaks. And at first, it gave me shivers. I had a voice through the written words of another. The entire writing was a great justification for becoming an interplanetary species. Bradbury says, we sit up in our coffins to abandon the Earth's mortuary tomb, knowing that we are the betweens, too soon from the cave, too far from the stars. We must ignore the whispers from the cave and say stay. We must listen to the stars and say come. Through the years, I have come to the belief I am the only person with my thoughts, opinions, and mindsets. 
gradually snapped me out of this dark place. First of all, in the Martian Chronicles, he showed me what we'd have to do after we footprinted Mars as we did the moon. As well as, he showed me those at my side, like Werner von Braun. And in Fahrenheit 51, he reminded me of technology. Not only the good it can do, but the bad too. And last, but certainly not least, too soon from the cave, too far from the stars. The chapter from Bradbury Speaks. Where I was lent a voice on a topic I was deeply passionate about. Bradbury has been a driving force for me. He picked me up when I he picked me up when I needed it most, and he showed me at those those at my side ready for the struggle. Bradbury states, "There can be no rest. We're always moving on. For to rest means to stop, and to stop might well mean a fall back into the dust. It is the stars or the grave. Arise and go." Uh, 